Hello and welcome to my video of the Olight H2R Nova headlamp. This is a new product out so I thought I'd get a video up just to show you an overview and an unboxing on the product. This isn't a review, I'll be doing a more in-depth review on this once I've finished all the other tests. So this is more of an overview for you just to show you what you get included and a brief look at the headlight itself. Now on the back of the specs you can see we have a super high 2300 but the difference between the cool white and neutral white there is a slight power reduction on the neutral white that's quite normal and that's your run times approximately. Opening up the box inside you can see they've gone for the cardboard instead of the usual plastic one but that's okay it's probably easier to get things and recycle it. In this section we just pull that out and you'll see under there we have the user manual. I'll have a look at that in my full review and we'll take out the sections inside. This is a spare pad and adhesive section and onto the strap, the head strap. You'll see you have the USB charging cable, the magnetic cable that's included there. Length of that's around about 30 centimeters. Just plug that into the USB port and then you can snap on the bottom of the torch. Very easy and simple system. It's also compatible with other Olight torches. Now these pads are included so that if you remove the back pad you can actually take the magnet out of the head strap. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that but it's an option and you can just fill in the magnet with that larger pad. Now looking at the strap, very nice quality as you'd expect. Um, a bit different to the other straps that I've seen from Olight. They've also added some arrows as well and you have a top adjuster. Shouldn't have a problem getting a fit. I've tried it on with hats on and onto the head, no problem. Now this section on the front, it's mostly plastic, but they've sort of managed to merge the silicone section to it. Not sure how they've done that exactly. So this part, the flap there is silicone, but the rest of it is actually hard plastic and it's magnetic. The magnetic part is the battery. Obviously the torch is aluminium, so that's not a non-magnetic material. And it seemed pretty strong. If you put it inside and start shaking it around and there's no movement at all from it, it doesn't fall out. So that's quite reassuring on the magnetic grip and then you just pull over the flap and it's quite a deep lug on that. So I don't see any opportunity for that to fall out and it seems quite uh, stiff turning it. It's uh, not loose at all so I can't imagine that it's going to change its position by accident although I'll have to see what happens if it's raining, things like that. You can see the uh, design of the body of the torch is slightly different. They've got more uh, knurling areas and in different directions that's probably helping. They've also changed the style of the button. The button is a silicone feel. You have the grooves there for the heat sink and you'll see we have the double clip that's included too. That's another change. Instead of the normal standard clip they've gone for a double one. Unscrew the base, take out the protective cap. This is a customized cell so the positive and negative terminals are on the same end. You can use other uh, button top cells with this you can see on the bottom there marking about not short circuiting it. I'll take the battery out. I'm going to do a proper test on this in the full review, but this is rated to 3000 milliamps an hour. It's got ultra high drain and it says that it does have a protection circuit included with it too. So I'm going to run some tests on this. I'll try and get a capacity figure for it. I'm also going to try out some other batteries and see what the story is with those. Looking at the front of the lens, you can see this look of micro lenses, very similar to the H1R Nova. That should spread the light out quite effectively. And taking the clip off, pretty strong. You'll have to pull this with quite a bit of force to get it off if you want to get it off. Now, if you're attaching it to the head strap, you're going to want to take this off. But for a normal using it as a normal torch, I could probably just leave that on. I wouldn't have any problems using that. That avoids the problem of having to rotate it around onto the button. A bit bigger than the H1R and I have the H1R next to it. You can see obviously there's a size difference. It's almost twice the length. A little bit thicker. The torch is actually very light though. It's the battery that's going to be most of the weight. And you'll see the different design on the button. They've angled it on the H2R. Operation with this is very straightforward, in line with the other O-lights, single press on and off. We have a memory and then you can push and hold to go through the settings. Note you do have the soft on and off as well, so it sort of gradually ramps up. 
and if you double click you go into the turbo mode. I'll be doing some beam shots on that in the full review but it is pretty bright as you would expect. If you push and hold you go into the moonlight mode and if you push and hold again and keep holding you'll see it flash then you've got the momentary on and that's power on that level is moonlight too. Triple press will take you to the SOS and there's just one single strobe mode on this. No normal strobe or any other, just the SOS. Right, so that was my quick overview on the H2R. I'm working on the review right now, so I'll hopefully have that done shortly. Don't really want to rush that because this is quite an interesting product and I want to give you some good beam shots and comparisons and other tests that I'll do. But I hope you found that useful if you're looking at this head torch. Don't forget to subscribe and I will have that review up fairly soon and I will see you very shortly in the next video.